Welcome to the Women in Business radio show with Sean Murphy, connecting women in business around the globe. Hello and welcome into the Women in Business radio show studio. See, we're not laughing this week, are we? But now thinking about us not laughing this week, I'm actually starting to laugh. <laughs> I'm actually starting to laugh. Mm. It's like some sort of trigger anchor. I, we, we go on air, I start laughing. Never yep. mind. Welcome to the show. I'm Sean Murphy and my co-host is... Mikhail Yanni Attard. Brilliant. And who else have we got in the studio? We have our special... Guest today is Desiree Nurse. She is the founder of Cleopatra's Beauty Spot and Cleopatra's Legacy. And she is also, sorry, I'm moving away from the microphone because I'm losing my papers here. She is also a VIP, VIP exhibitor at the Women in Business Big Show for 2024, which is on at Longfield Academy on the 8th of August next month. Correct. It is next month. It is next please, month, 100%. <laughs> please tell me it's next month. It is next month. Also in the studio today, we have Jeanette Forder, who is the owner and CEO of Phoenix Wellness Coaching. And she may well be taking part in the conversation. We will see how it goes. We are focusing for this part of the show on Desiree. So welcome, Desiree, into the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, my, my, my pleasure. So you are the founder of Cleopatra's Beauty Spot and Cleopatra's Legacy. The Community Interest Company. And I very, very recently, thank you so much, you invited me along to your opening down in Chatham, didn't wow, you? Yes. And there were so, there was there were, there were lots of, what should we call, pe- local dignitaries there, yes. weren't they? It was a really, it was a brilliant event. Unfortunately, I couldn't stay for that long. Yes. But I, we, there was music, mm-hmm. there was food. It was, it was really, really super, wasn't it? It Amazing. was indeed. It was indeed. So really well done on that. So inspiring. Thank you. And what I'm actually going to ask you to do is, um, I think we'll just start off. I'd like to hear your story. I think we'd like to hear mm-hmm. a little bit about how you got to where you are and who you work with now and who you help. Okay. So, so. how long you said the show was again? It's a- <laughs> We're on air for about for about an hour. I never put a time on this, okay? okay. Because I think the story that we hear is mm. the story that we're meant to hear. Yeah, right. I so, get that. Off you go. All right. I'll let me start from the beginning. Really. Um, so I was born in Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean, um, and I had my daughter at nineteen. I left subsequently when she was about two and a half. And I came to England looking for a better opportunity and um, to be able to offer something to my daughter other than nothingness. Um, So I had had a lot of options at the time, you know, immigrating to Canada or America. Um, But I spoke to an uncle of mine and he said, "Mm, I can't see you going to America or Canada because you'll be stuck in babysitting because that's what most people do for the most part when they go. And I can't see you giving up your child for people to look after your mom, etc., your family, and you then go in and look after other people's children. Why don't you consider going to England? And I was like, huh? Where's that? I mean, duh, I see it on television, but I mean, I'm a country girl from mm-hmm. in a small island. Mm-hmm. So he said, I think if you go to England, you can actually work and go to school and do something with your life and offer your daughter much more than you can if you're just babysitting in America. And you'll then be able to send her the odd sort of barrel of clothes or whatever um, opportunities. And I'm like, OK, fair enough. Right. England, here she comes. How do I get there? <laughs> Couldn't necessarily walk. So <laughs> I was thinking, right. So then he told me, he said, um, I met some people up there when I was traveling. He did his doctorate up here. And he said, there's some old Trinidadian men that came over here back in the days and they got married and settled down. He said, and um, if you contact them, they're really good folks. If you contact them, they might be able to help you sort yourself out and, you know, help you with accommodation and stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. No problem. Right. How do I leave Trinidad and get there? Next problem. Now, my parents, even though I wasn't at home and I had my daughter and I was living with my then partner, I was very close to my family. And um, my mom sort of 
will be really difficult for me to go and have a conversation about me leaving my daughter and going to England, to whom I have no family over here. I don't know anybody over here. So anyway, um, prayed about it. And then I said, you know what? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So he told me about this one man in particular named Mr. Jones, for the record. Um, and he said, give him a call when you sort yourself out and he will um, help you. And I was like, okay, no problem. Um, so I was like, mm, how do I get to come here? But having said that, I met some people in Trinidad and this nurse, she came here and she studied nursing and she came back for holidays in Trinidad. And she was like, oh, if you do nursing up there, you'll get through and they will give you accommodation as in a hostel and all these different things. So I was like, aha, uh -huh, story time. Mm. So then I was like, mom, dad, um, I applied for nursing in England and I got through and um, all I need to get is my ticket to go up and my mom and I must be on ecstatic. And yes, it was a lie. But I had to do something to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom and my stepdad was like, oh my gosh, I was so proud because, as I said, none of my family members at the time left. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, my mom was like, you know, I have your daughter. It's not a problem and blah, blah, blah. And everybody was just so ecstatic because I'm the first of four for my mom, right? And I'm like, I have to be able to do something because culturally back then, um, being the first, you sort of have to help out with the others, really. That was like an unspoken rule. Mm. You know, you had to look out for the others. So I'm like, all right, so I have to be able to help my siblings and stuff. So you know what? My best option is to go over there and forge a way. Yeah. So I was like, okay, right. My dad went to the bank and he got a loan from a plane ticket. And he was like, right, he had a mini bus for us to go to the airport. And everybody in the village was like waving and like, oh my gosh, she's going to England. <laughs> Let's circle back a little bit. So when he got the money from the bank and I was like, oh, gosh, this is really happening. Yeah, it's happening. Where am I going to stay? What am I going to do? So then I remember my uncle told me about Mr. Jones. Yeah. So back then we didn't have a house phone or anything. We had pay phone out on the high street. So we had a small shop at home. So I took a bag with 25 cents because quarters to go in the pay phone. So I went by the phone box. I took a deep breath. I was like, okay, we're going to do this. And this is me talking to myself, right? You're going to do this. You're going to do this. You can't fail. You're not built to fail. You have to succeed. You have to do this. Right. Pick up the phone, dial the phone number in England. And then I heard, hello, <laughs> this heavy voice. And I'm thinking, <gasps> anyway started throwing the quarters because it was eating away at calling call in England. So I just threw in the quarters before I could even say. And he was like, hello. And I was like, hi, is this Mr. Jones? And he was like, yes. I said, my name is Desiree and my uncle um, Joseph gave me a number. Oh, how Sammy doing? And I was like, he's doing great. <laughs> throwing in the quarters. And he was like, um, he was like, um, how can I help? I said, well, I'm planning to come to England. And he did tell me that if I ever come to England, that you might be able to give me some sort of assistance um, and possibly help me, like, get a cash in hand job or something until I sort out everything. And he was like, yeah, man, that is no problem. When you come in? So I said, well, um, I'm coming on Wednesday. <laughs> and he was like... You know, it's Sunday night, right? I was like, yeah. <laughs> he said, well, that's not a problem. And my wife can come and see you where you're staying. I was like, well, that's the thing. Um, I don't really have anywhere to stay. He said, what? <laughs> I said, I don't really have anywhere to stay. He said, um, oh. He said, well, you're very lucky. I was like, am I? He said, yeah, because I live in Plumstead. He said, and I live on Waverley Road. He said, but there is a house that I own as well on Waverley Crescent where I used to do fostering for the council um, and look after children, teens. He said, and it's going up for refurbishment, so it's empty at the moment. So you can make your way here and we will house you there for the time being until you sort yourself out. I was like, oh, oh, this is fantastic. Right, he says, so if you make your way to Victoria, um, I'll be able to come and meet you there. And possibly my wife will come as well, Anne. And I was like, okay, no problem. Thank you so very much. He's like, well, I look forward to seeing you. You know, yeah, you show some, you know, proper guts here, you know. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. Come off the phone and I'm thinking, Victoria, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> How do I find her? <laughs> and then um, my uncle said, that's um, sort of like one of the main... Um, 
what do you call it, a transport area. I was like, okay, cool, right. Okay. Anyway, long story short, and I tell you the truth, this is no, no joke. So I went home and we had a chest freezer that we used to store food in, like frozen meats and mm. stuff. So I'm like, they said England is really super cool, yeah? And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I can survive. <laughs> What did I do? And this is not a word of a lie. So I opened the chest freezer and I put my head in and I pulled down the, the top of the chest freezer. And I, I was like, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, man, I can live in the cold. What are you talking about? It's not that cold. So, yes, that is how that started. So I came. Um, with a t-shirt and some jeans and a bag with a few bits. I went go through the whole palaver, them coming to meet me, blah, 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 blah. And um, yeah, that's how I was booted here. Um, and I went in this lovely house in Waverly Crescent. And when I got there, they opened the door for me and it had bags of shopping. His wife Anne went and got some shopping, cornflakes, butter, bread, egg, wow. milk, you name it. And um, they welcomed me. And then eventually they said, um, oh, great. So come across that. Haven't, let me just circle back. That was in 19th of December, 1996. And I've never left my family before. Wow. Never left Trinidad before. So I took a bit of a leap. Um, yes. So I came here and um, just decided that I can't feel. I just cannot feel. Whatever I do, I can't feel. The other thing I decided is that I'm not going to be one of the statistics and be one of those immigrants that sign on and take dole or anything like that. I'm not going to be one of them, so I am going to work until I can't. And that was how that started. So that was the beginning of the journey. Right. Can I breathe now? You can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> so, so you are in the UK. Mm -hmm. You've got somewhere to stay. Mm -hmm. You... Don't ha you haven't started on what has I think become your career path and your business. Mm -hmm. How did you get to start your beauty business? Right. So, um, long story short, I did um, dental nursing in Whitechapel in um, Roy the Royal London Hospital in Whitechapel. Yeah, know that. So after I did that, I um, then started to work in different different dental surgeries throughout England. And then I was looking for premises to purchase my first house 10 years after I got here. Same wow. with deposit and I work, like, I work like a dog. Anyway, um, so moved up to Medway Towns, don't know how. I put in an offer in a house in Northampton and three months later moved into a house in Medway. <laughs> As you do. Yeah, as you do. As I mean, you, do. you know, my life is just very typical. So, yeah, I went kind of moving in the house and I was like, okay, beautiful. Right. So I had my son by that time. He was two. So I have a 12-year-old daughter, well, 14-year-old daughter, two-year-old son. Right. Okay. Move into Medway. So one day I walked down the high street, went to get some hair products and, and services for our hair type and stuff. <laughs> And it had one other shop, went into that shop and um, I asked the guy if he had a specific type of hair extension. And he was like, in the corner there. And I was like, right, OK. <laughs> and then I asked for something else and he was like, look over there. And I'm thinking, hang on, my current role at the moment, I was a team leader and my sole role was customer service. Absolutely. Mm. So I went in there and I'm thinking, I can't give you my money and you're speaking to exactly. me like this. This is absolutely exactly. atrocious. Yeah. So then I was talking to my mom about it and she's like, listen, you just save your company that you're just then working for millions of pounds. We're thinking out of the box. Why don't you open your own business? And I'm like, are you insane? Are you hearing what you're saying? Are you going through the menopause or something? Because at the end of the day, yeah, yeah. I just took out a mortgage on a fixed salary that I know I can manage. Yeah. You're now asking me to give up that and go self-employed where I don't know what will come in on a daily basis. Absolutely. So how can I manage a house and my children with not knowing what's happening? Anyway. Because I'm a woman of faith, I um, started to pray and I'm like, all right, all right, shall you do this? Going to London and traveling first thing in the morning, I used to leave my children sleeping. When I come home from work in the night, I'll meet them sleeping. So I had zero quality of life with my children. Yeah. As a matter of fact, my daughter lost most of me when I was growing up. Yeah. So anyway, thought about it and then I was like, okay. I sure you can do this. But I just bought the house, so I had no money. All I had was a credit card with 3500 And I tell myself, I'll buy furniture. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I spoke to my then partner and my daughter because my son was quite young. I spoke to my mom and I was like, "Do you think I can do this?" And she's like, "I have all the faith in you." Sorry, I don't have all the faith in you. And I was like, "Really?" So I walked down the high street and I went to this place called Trafalgar Square. Yeah. The in shops, indoor market. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I went in there and I said, "All right. So if this is gonna work, it's gonna work." So I asked this reception people. I said, "Um." Um, is there any units available? And she showed me one way down in the back and she's like, this is all we have available at the moment. It's 90 pounds a week, blah, blah, blah. And she took me through the terms and conditions. I was like, all right, cool. She said, did you come with your passport and, and stuff? And I was like, well, no, I didn't walk with anything. So I was like, okay. She said, can we make a date next week, Monday or something? And you come back and bring the documents and then you'll be able to get it. So I went home, spoke to my mom, spoke to my daughter, spoke to my then partner. And I was like... I don't know. It's really far back. It have nothing um, like this in this end of the high street. Nothing like this really, particularly in the Medway towns. Mm-hmm. Do you think? And anyway, I was like, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. So by then I packed in the job, going all guns blazing. I was like, yep, yeah, is this or nothing? Yep. So I went down there and went to meet her again. When I went in, I was like, you sure you don't have any units close up the front? And she was like, um... Well, um, no, we don't have anything close up the front. But then a cleaner was sitting in there. Her name was Julie. And she said, actually, that soap shop, the fourth one in, gave up the license. So that's available. And she looked at her and she was like. (laughs) (laughs) So she was like, well, I think that's available then. Um, Let's have a look. And she went, she fumbled through some papers. And then she was like, yeah, I think it's becoming available. It's way more expensive than the one in the back because it's in the front. I was like. Well, how much more expensive is it? And she's yeah. like, it's seventy-five pounds a week. I was like, oh, well, here what? Let me have that one. <laughs> wow. yeah, I'll have that one. And then, um, yes, yeah, so that is how Cleopatra's Beauty Spot started. Wow. Um, and what were you doing at that? You, you, it was a retail store. Yes. Yeah. What, what sort of things were you selling? So basically, I was catering for the Afro Caribbean community then, mm-hmm. because. I'm Afro-Caribbean and I had no hair supply products. I had to go back to London to get anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I realized that the community, the diverse community we had in Medway Towns was growing. Mm -hmm. So the demand demand was there. So I'm like, well, why can't I meet the needs? Treat them like human beings, speak to them like people, you know, and and, and give them some dignity while Mm -hmm. you're meeting the needs. Mm-hmm. I mean, what? I mean you know, it's just a. I wouldn't even think about it. I wouldn't think I, if if I go into a shop, I sort of expect to have people say please and thank you, yeah, yeah. and treat me with respect. I mean, yeah. it's just a it's a no brainer, or exactly. I just turn around and leave. Yeah, but but as a woman of the world, you'll know that there's lots of different cultures, and there's mm. also different attitudes. Yes, that's Unfortunately, true. Unfortunately, one of my main goal when I moved in here, moved up to Medway Tongues, was to show them that all people of color was not necessarily the same. Exactly. Because there is that sort of dynamic where you have people that's really harsh speaking, really abrupt speaking, and I was like, no. We're all not like that. We can make you feel welcome while taking your money, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> so, so this guy that was so rude mm-hmm. was it? Um, was it a cultural thing? Because that's just the way he he he, he as part of his culture that he was, spoke. Yeah. So part of right. his oh, okay. culture. Now, that right. Is how okay. Came so he so he wasn't necessarily being rude and dismissive of you personally. It was just his culture. It was just the way yes he spoke. Yes and no, but he's also been here quite a bit of time. Okay. And I assume so he, he, he would know better. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And right. he doesn't. So you'll apply. But actually, do you know, I'm saying it doesn't matter, does it? You know, you start, you set up a business. Yes. It doesn't matter where you are. Yes. It doesn't matter what culture you're in. You uh-huh. sort of, you, you have a look around you and you go, okay, what yeah. goes on here? Yes. Yeah. What go, I, th- these are people that I want to serve, that I want to... Yeah. Take their money, yeah, literally. Basically, yeah. I, I want them to become my customers. And you see, it's just what we do, isn't it? We have a look around and we go, "What's right here? What's appropriate?" Yeah. Absolutely. But mm. that is what some people would do, not all. Mm. Because funny enough, you should say that. And to digress a little bit, I was in a supermarket um, one year, one time behind a, a certain demographic of, of people, and the cashier, one of the ladies that was cashing out. The cashier said, um, would you like a bag? And she's like, yes, I want a bag. 
And I was, like, I was like, you don't need to speak to her mm. like that. And she's like, she's serving me. I don't need to say please and thanks and all of that. And I'm thinking, sure. what? Mm. Are you absolutely real? Yeah. Mm. Do you know, and it have people that have that mindset that because they're paying you for something, they don't need to be nice. They don't need to be kind. Vice versa. Yeah. If you come into my premises, you want something from me. So I don't have to be kind to you. And it's still, yes, I know. Right, okay. It have people with that mindset. Sorry, still. My, my, yeah. my face is involuntary. <laughs> sort of involuntarily <laughs> pulling, pulling faces. Yeah. 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 not something that I find easy yes. to, to understand. Yes, I know. Yeah. I would understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I hear that. But because of, especially, so firstly, because of my background in customer service and because of where I will look, was located when we were working, mm-hmm. I would walk into stores like Gucci's and Tiffany's and um, Karen Millen and you would walk in there and they, they would only see a potential customer. Yeah. They saw nothing mm. else. Yeah. So they would greet you, you know, with a nice welcome and it would be yeah. like, hello, madam, how can I help? How can I be of service? And Absolutely. stuff like that I took away, you know? Mm. And I'm like, everybody have to feel like somebody yeah. because you have the power of my wages in your pocket. Exactly. Mm. Do you understand? Yes. I totally yes. Agree. So, so that was my concept. And I'm thinking, I can't come and give you my money and you're rude. Yeah, you're literally exactly. rude, culturally or not. It's, it's mm. just rudeness. Mm. It is. You yes, You can say is. the yes. same thing in a different tone. You yeah. know, and I I, I, mm. I refuse to accept that. Mm. So that was that part of it. And and again, it, it shows, it just shows that I, I was determined, you know, and hence I can, you know, quite confidently say that we build a really mm. strong brand in the Cleopatra's Beauty Spot. Um, and that, that name, because it's synonymous in Medway and everybody will know that. And 99% mm. of the people will be like, no, 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 they're really lovely, they're really kind. And that is what we focus on because you're human, mm-hmm. you know, to begin with. But, but that one incident... Mm. You can almost trace it back to that yes. one incident exactly. of, that, of that bloke talking to you like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's amazing how sometimes that happens, doesn't yeah, it? it is. Sometimes we can't pinpoint it, mm-hmm. but other times we we know mm. and we know what the what Triggers. what what, yeah, what yeah. the turning point yes, was. Yeah, mm. yeah. and I, I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have it. This is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> so you've got your unit. Yeah. you're in. Um, we have international listeners, yes. so. I think we we need to try and explain what in shops was at Chatham. It was like a a very small mall, wasn't it? Yes. With um, I, I suppose a corridor. Yes. And uh, down the middle and units. Yes. Yeah. Small smallish units. They'd yes. be like three or four meters square, yes. wouldn't they? Yes. Yes. Um, so one big front door. Yeah. You go in and then there are these small three to four meter square mm-hmm. units. Yes. Um, in a great big long sort of yeah. corridor type premises, so everybody's yes. all together under under one roof, but yes. you've got separate little areas. Yes. That's it. So, how did you 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 move from being in there mm-hmm. to being outside? Because you joined, you've now joined the main high street, yes. haven't you? You are out there. <laughs> yeah, I am out there. Um, I think supply and demand, and I think because of the customer service that we pride ourselves on. Um, we grew, we grew, and we also had some help from um, partners um, for growth in Medway Council yeah. um, back in 2009, I think it was, um, because, again, meeting supply and demand. So we then eventually acquired the, the premises. It used to be the old um, Blue Arrow Recruitment Agency. Oh, I know. Mm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So... Long story short, um, I got that through the help of my then or my now accountant, um, Craig McKinley. Mm-hmm. Um, he was the MP for Tarnet. So mm-hmm. I told him I was sort of meeting a lot of stumbling blocks and hitting my head against walls trying to get a, a mm. premises on the high street. Mm-hmm. And he said, what did you have your eyes on? And I said, well, that one is not too far from where we are in the tr- in shops, Trafalgar mm-hmm. Centre. Mm-hmm. Um, but every time I try to get information as to, you know, the lease and all these different things because it was closed for quite a while. He said, oh, let me have a go. And he did some land registry research. Um, He found out that the owners were one in mid... One was in Kent and one was in Fort Lauderdale in Florida. Okay. It was two sisters that owned the premises and he reached out to them. Yeah. um, And they said, yeah, he was acting on my behalf. And he said, yeah, we'll lease it. Um, Blue Arrow lease is coming to an end. Um, We'll give it the last six months for you to do up the premises and stuff. And he then sort out a a car... uh, 
a solicitor for me in Raynham. Nice, yeah. We tied in the paperwork and everything. And um, yeah, we moved across there um, in 2012, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was Cleopatra's beauty spot. And just tell us a little bit about what you sell and what you do, Mm -hmm. just as Cleopatra's Beauty Spot. So as Cleopatra's Beauty Spot, again, we were focusing on the Afro-Caribbean growing community. So we had all the different products that we Mm -hmm. need, um, skin moisturizer, hair moisturizer, um, relaxers, shampoos, everything like that. Then we did um, fashion wigs um, because we love to change our hair every five minutes. Um, so we would have wigs that you can sort of today. I feel like Beyonce tomorrow. I feel like <laughs> Naomi Campbell. You know, so so, good. so we had all these different wigs and we had all these different hair extensions that we did. Um, but while doing that, I realized that we was meeting the needs of the den. Um, I would say. Um, not European, but white English women as well. Yeah. So they too wanted to feel like Claudia Schiffer when they come out and um, Kate Moss. Actually, I can, I, yes. I, as, as I'm talking to you yeah. now, I, I remember, I'm remembering my mother yeah. who had a huge variety of wigs and strange yes. coloured glasses and, mm-hmm. yeah. and, and, and all sorts. Yeah. And that's just who she was. Yes. And I'm wondering if, so in the sort of 60s and 70s, yes. And I mean, I remember her being like this um, sort of until I lost her being in her 80s, you know, yeah. sort of the 80s and 90s. Had, had, she'd open a the door. There'd be a variety of yes. wigs in there. She'd be blonde, pink, yes. blue, Amazing. long black hair, short, mm-hmm. red hair. Uh, have you? Yeah. Um, is Very it good. something? Is it something that was that odd? Was my mum odd? Or was it something that women did then and perhaps it's now time for it to come back I think it's always been a thing I think mm. we see it with the celebrities all the time we and do. I think a lot of people had the misconception that they would then be dying the hair so that is why you have a lot of hair damage because right. they would okay. change the hair but it used to be wigs it still is yeah. wigs you know it yeah. just have really good quality wigs that you wouldn't know <laughs> but it was always for the See, most part. I might, have, I might have to get a wig. Yeah, I'm <laughs> thinking that actually, going a bit. You know, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just thinking, who can I be today? Exactly. Today, Sean, exactly. you will be. Yeah. Would mind being Cleopatra. You see what I mean? Today, Matthew, yeah. you're gonna be. So I, I'm gonna take us on in a moment to some of the other yes stuff that that's been going on with you. But there were just sort of three key points that I've picked out from what you're saying mm-hmm. that I, I found notable. Mm-hmm. And the first is that you said a couple of times, if not this exact phrase, something very similar, this or nothing. Yes. And just thinking about how key that has been to yeah. to your success. It's this or nothing. Um, other things is about asking your local authority for yes. help. Yes. So going and asking, just asking the council. I yeah. think sometimes as businesses, we don't take ourselves seriously as yeah. businesses. Absolutely. That's, in fact, that's one of the reasons that I, that I set up the Women in Business Big Show. Yes. It was to make sure that a business women and men actually mm-hmm. of any size mm-hmm. feel OK mm-hmm. and feel that they have a place to go and ask the local authority, which mm-hmm. is why we have the councils there and all of that sort yes. of thing. You're in the same space. So just go and ask the local council, even if they say no. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. if they say you're not big enough, yes. um, you've asked. It doesn't. Yes. What have you lost? Yeah. Um, and the other thing I got from this is about telling other people what you want. You know, you t- you told your accountant, mm-hmm. "This is what I want." Yes, I, I, you possibly didn't even have an expectation of him doing something. No, but he did. Yes, and he and he did something by speaking to somebody else. And we just never know who's yeah. going to come up with stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And just to tell people what you want. This yeah. is what I'm looking for. Yeah. And without any sort of, like I say, without any expectation yes. that they're actually going to do anything, yes. you've just told them. Yeah. And in, at some point in the future, you never know. The, the planets align, don't mm-hmm. they? Come, yeah. Oh, hang on a minute! I know somebody who's looking for, for that. that. Exactly. Yeah. So just tell tell people yeah. tell people that are already working with you yeah. what you want. Exactly. Yeah. Connections are important yeah, and they're key yeah. for any business. But, all, but also just sharing what, yeah. what, what it is that you want. I think sometimes we keep it inside, don't mm-hmm. we? But there's reasons for that, though, because sometimes you tell people, and you know, yeah, they run I, with it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it always have people that have more disposable income than you. Mm-hmm. It always have people that's well connected. And sometimes you have a, a vision and you're like, oh, OK, you share it with somebody. And next thing you know, oh, but she's gone with my idea. Yeah. So well, sometimes people do that. That's yeah. why I think they keep it close to the chest. It's it's yeah. it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because it is. I 
I don't know. I, perhaps I'm a little bit naive, but I think stuff happens as it's mm. supposed to happen. Yeah. yeah. And if somebody runs off with your idea, if yeah. you like, then it wasn't. It, it was it wasn't meant for you. Yeah. Yes. It wasn't meant for you. It was an yeah. idea, but yes. it, and and it was an idea, and it was an idea for somebody else maybe, yes. and Possibly, it yeah. wasn't necessarily your idea. Yes. Um, that you'll come up with another one, and you'll know. Yes. yes. Exactly. In an um, instant. And mm. and you'll know, but yes. sometimes you have to let stuff stuff has to be go or yes. it almost be taken away from you mm. before you know that mm. that was never mm. right mm. i have i have so many examples yes. of that yeah, yeah. But, where i thought i thought this is the way i'm going this yeah. is what i'm doing i may or may not have shared it but for mm. whatever reason it didn't happen and now when i look back i go actually do you know if I'd have done that, mm. this wouldn't have happened yeah. or exactly. that would have happened. I exactly. tell myself that yeah. all the time yeah. with my um, last partner. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's also one thing here as women, mm -hmm. and it's a bit of a generalisation, but there's two words. We don't tell people things because of imposter syndrome. Yes. Because yeah, we actually syndrome. think we're not good enough. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And, and, and that's the other thing is, mm -hmm. is the fear that somebody is going to look at you and go, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, somebody else, but not you, yeah. Dumpling. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, they, they may not actually say it in those words. That's yes. what they're thinking. But, yes. but, but, exactly. but yes. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes, especially if we're, um, you know, I, I think sometimes friends and relatives who maybe have a vested interest, even if they don't realise they have mm. that, in keeping us smaller than yeah, we are. Yeah, exactly. Because we're in our little box and they know where we are and we're quite, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, exactly. it keeps Which us in, in the place. Yeah. Yes. Um, we'll do stuff to knock that back. Yes. Yeah. But I think it needs to be out there. Yeah. It I, does. I just think it does. Not everything. Yeah. But yeah. you know, if you're looking, if you're looking for something like a premises, if yes. you're looking for a particular person, yeah. you know, mm. a, a particular skill to bring into your business, mm. then share it. Yeah. I have been very, very, very fortunate. I, I thought you were going to say lucky. Very fortunate. And I, <laughs> yeah. I, thought, I thought you were going to say lucky. Yes. And I was going to, you know, don't make me climb over that table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not I luck. Can, I can feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. But yeah, I've been very, very fortunate. I've met some wonderful, generous people um, with the time, um, you know, self, you know, yeah. with the selflessness and been really supportive. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, hang on, I, I'm, I'm waving. Can you open the door? Sorry, we're boiling in here. Sorry, we're in a studio. It's absolutely boiling. I'm just asking Jeanette to open the door. You see, it's real. It yes, is real. It is. So I'm so sorry, folks, if you start to hear some noise coming, if you start to hear some noise coming through. So we've um, we've opened up the soundproof studio before we all pass out. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So... Sure. Um, you are, we are now up to your running a successful mm -hmm. beauty business. Yes. And next it's time for Cleopatra's Legacy um, CIC. Mm -hmm. Tell us what that's about. All right. So, so the branch off from Cleopatra's Beauty Spot to Cleopatra's Legacy CIC. So while working, um, while in Cleopatra's Beauty Spot, we used to have a significant number of women that would go to the hospital for the cancer treatment or dermatological issues. Mm -hmm. um, been issued wigs up there, and then they would come straight to Cleopatra's Beauty Spot and say, I hate it. I chose it mm -hmm. out of a magazine. When I put it on, it looked terrible. Can mm -hmm. I get something from you, please? I feel really, really horrible. I've, I'm yeah. losing my hair for chemo. So I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. It's happened once, twice, three times, over a dozen times. And I'm thinking, this is not making sense. Mm -hmm. Why is the hospital paying for them to get something they don't like? They're going to necessarily, more than, more than likely, dump that, yeah. chuck it in the bin when I can fill that gap. Give them something because I have the disposable time. Okay. I know that they have clinical staff that is trying to fit in, do those bits. Why can I not do that for them? You know? So mm. um, I was speaking to different people. Again, I was talking about it. Mm. And I was speaking to one of my clients I was doing extensions on. And she was like, oh, I know exactly who you need to speak to. So she took out her mobile phone and she called this number. And she's like, oh, hi, John. Can you speak to Desiree, please? She has something to say. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> oh, my word. And literally, um, listen, I tell no lies. So I took the phone and I was like, oh, hi, um, my name is Desiree. Him, yes, I'm John. Um, I heard you have something to say. I was like, well... You've got a lot of very deep voice yeah, measure. Yeah, you? And I'm like, okay, um, so this is what's been happening. Cut a long story short, as I said. Yeah. People been leaving the hospital, coming here. But he's like, oh, okay. He said, well, funny you should say that. We were thinking about outsourcing that... Um, 
that feel that um, service. So can we have a meeting? I was like, well, of course. So I said, he was, who is John? Is so he was a head at the time. He was a head uh, manager of orthotics in Medway Maritime Hospital. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's so good connection. Then, yeah. So she was like, um, he was like, yeah, I think we need to explore this some more. Um, I think we need to schedule a meeting. Let me see what you have to offer and we can have a conversation. So I was like, yeah, why not? He was like, so when are you available? I said, well, this is your time. You tell me. I mean, you're a busy manager. You tell mm-hmm. me. And he was like, well, tomorrow. I said, okay, no problem. Okay. So then I gasped for breath, hung up the phone. I finished carrying, I carried on with my extensions for the client. And I said, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate that. Oh, shit. Sorry. Um, what am I going to do next? Oh, dear. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So he wanted me to do a bit of a presentation. So I got a massive carrier bag. And I grab wigs from curly human hair um, to short, you know, gray hair, all sorts of different sort of description. I put it in a bag. Um, I put the accessories, the wig care products. I put the um, the stand for it, the brushes, everything. So I said, I'm going to do a demonstration, literally on the spot. Um, I didn't have a suitable clothes, I don't think, but I had a blazer. So I had on a T-shirt and a jeans and I pulled my blazer over it. I take a scarf, put it in my neck in the morning, jump up, went up to the hospital with this big bag, if you see me. And I'm like, yeah, you know what you're doing, Gail. You've got this. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. No idea. So he said, come to Area 5, da-da-da, come and meet him there. And I went. And he was like, yeah, so talk to me about what you have and tell me about your experience. So I went through the spiel. I said, listen, I find too many women coming down to me. They're chucking the wigs that I get in the hospital. It's not fit for purpose. They're choosing it from a catalog, blah, 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 blah. He was like, I thought the same thing. And I think the patient experience matters, especially what they're going through. And your song like That's just great. the right fit for us. So he said, let me push this above, push your, push your case forward, and we will see what happens. I'm not going to make you any promises, but we'll see what happening. So I was like, okay, cool, no problem. Two weeks later, I got a phone call from him and he's like, I'm going to send a client here now. She needs something, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, so that means I got through then. <laughs> so anyway, um, that was 2014, October 2014. And I started to supply the hospital with wigs. Um, so wigs and hair, head scarves, um, hair pieces, um, both for cancer patients and for people that are going through who have scarring, psoriasis, mm. yeah. you know, um, menopause, thinning hair. Mm-hmm. So under dermatology. So I started to see a host of different people. And while seeing these people, I started to talk to them because I had the time. As I said, I'm not a clinical staff, so I didn't have to rush, you know, for patients and blah, blah, blah. So I'll sit down and I'll talk to these people and hear the concerns. And one of the things that was causing them great anxiety. And through that, I realized, hang on. So after they get the wig and they're feeling good, they're still struggling with finding with a good mastectomy bra. They're still not getting a proper um, uh, prosthetic um, false breast, breast form, because of the fact that even though they might get one in the hospital, it's quick, fast, yes, it's not necessarily fit for purpose, yeah. and they'll have it on the dressing table and they're not mm. using it. I also did some research in terms of the importance of wearing a breast form, how it affects your your, your spine, your back, yeah. your everything. chest, everything, everything, your balance yeah, and everything yeah. else. So then I've that same guy, John, he said, listen, um, during the lockdown, he said, we need because I know the salon has had to be closed for the um, the COVID, he said, would you fancy doing the training for the prosthetic because we want the continuity for the, the patients because I find it really comfortable coming to see you for the wigs. Yeah. How great it will be for them to see you as well for the breast form because you're actually changing lives. We also did like some questionnaires, feedback forms from the patients when they come and see me. And it was phenomenal, you know, the, the impact you have on the life and they will take time to make comments and how, you know, how, how it was really, really That's good. very good. So it's like fantastic. So we did the training in the hospital and then I was doing the breast form fitting in the hospital. So they'd see me in the salon for the wig because I couldn't at the time outsource that. Even though it's not clinical as such they still needed to keep it in the clinical environment yeah so i would then go to the hospital one day a week and do the breast form fitting right i'm trying to expedite all of this all right because we have we have time so having doing both services there it was working out a treat however john left Oh no! He went to another hospital how dare he and <laughs> i asked the same thing now yeah so in 2000 and 
2021, I think. Yeah, I was on holiday with my family. We took um, a few weeks off and we went to Trinidad back home. And I received an email while I was there that you have one month's notice and we taking the contract from you. And I was like, what? What happened? Um, anyway, a different manager came in, um, thought that it wasn't necessary. And he just pulled the contract. So then I decided, wow. um, do you know what? I will do this privately. There is a need. I know I'm making a difference. People wanted the service. So, hello. So I decided to do it. Then I reached out to Medway Council again. And I said, listen, this is the idea I have run in my head. Um, I want to be able to have a one-stop solution for people that are going through that journey. And not necessarily only cancer, but as I said, different hair loss reasons. Yeah. Um, menopause, psoriasis, scarring, you know, and different sort of areas didn't even realize that it had a, a area of the breast prosthetics that meet the need of other people outside of a mastectomy so it have people that were born with an even breast mm -hmm. so one peop one person came to me and she had like a, a b cup and a f cup which is her natural breast so she was uneven and being able to do something about that she said i never knew that they had stuff that they can do mm -hmm. for that she used to put um socks in her bra to fill it out and one time she went on a date and she forgot and when she undo her bra the socks fell <laughs> Sorry, out I'm, I'm laughing, yeah. I'm laughing. Yeah. it's not okay, but it's, yeah you. but it's all these different yeah. issues yeah. you know yeah. but I said one of the main thing and the key thing was listening to these women and the needs mm. so now that they can come and get the one stop solution they can get the wig they have a variety of options so I have more than 200 wigs in stock um, and they can w more or less leave with one on the day we do a free bra fitting service um, but we only work on like donations so if you feel charitable enough and you want to give a donation you can do that so that is how the CIC was booted so circle back a little bit reach out to Medway Council they said well what you're doing in the community is phenomenal it's really fantastic why don't you register CIC and I was like huh Okay, so they sent me a business advisor, Martin Small. Um, he came and he spoke to me and he said, yeah, you can do this because what you do is really beneficial. Um, you're doing a lot of work within the community, giving back so much. Um, why not register the CIC? So I was like, okay, fine. So I spoke to my daughter. We did the application. We've been approved in January this year and we have been, it's just been absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Good. Um, so under the CIC, we started with that. Yeah, and you think that's the end of that, isn't it? So, <laughs> oh, no. there, there, there you are. Community interest company set up. Mm -hmm. I think we need to go through and do a little bit of sort of, I don't know, bombarding you with some really quick questions. Go on which are, which, are, which are sort of quite good fun. Yeah. And ha having heard your amazing story, mm -hmm. um, I think this is going to fit in quite nicely. So where shall we start? I think we've done the key problem that we solve. I think we, or have we? What is the key problem you solve? Really quickly. Oh, okay. Um, I think I reduce a lot of anxiety. There you go. Yeah, it's totally different to what you've been talking about. Okay, <laughs> that was the right question. Uh -huh. you're, reducing, you're reducing anxiety for yes. a particular sector of the population yes. who have some very, very special problems. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, so I, I think I know what this is, but I'm not sure. Um, what's the biggest thing that went wrong? And I know what you put in, in the information that you sent through is that everything, you can learn from everything. But sometimes it takes a while for that learning to come mm -hmm. through. What's the biggest thing that went wrong that hit you at the time? Oh, self-belief. I think mm -hmm. I had moments okay. of doubt mm -hmm. um, whether or not I'm doing the right thing. Um, and as I said, I do all or nothing. So I went mm -hmm. all in and I was like, I put in my house at risk, my yeah. children future at risk. But you know what? If I've given it Everything that I have, it'll be fine. So, out of all of this lot, what's your biggest success? This is going to be cliche, but I think it's my children. Aww. My children. I have the most, and everybody will say that, but I have the most amazing children. I have a daughter that is, she's 31, and she has her own daughter, but her support is absolutely it, it surpasses mm. everything else. It's amazing. Um, and I have a son that is the kindest, gracious, most gracious soul. Um, he looks after me. I have medical needs as well. Um, and every night before he goes to bed, he will bring my medication. He'll bring water. You know, he'll make sure that I'm well looked after before he goes to bed. Even though my, my daughter doesn't live with me at the moment, she is her own place. So I think my children is best credit. Mm. I think they are my legacy. 
Mm. It's amazing. Mm. I want to ask you a really good question. Well, I think it's a really good question. Uh-huh. And I think this will be appropriate. What's your superpower? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, wow. I would probably say I am... Um, my mom usually say that I'm really good at problem solving in terms of I'm a lateral thinker. Okay. So I think my superpower will be that I can see, not well into the future, but I, I, I can Intuitive. rationalize, yes, I think yeah. that would be my superpower. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very resourceful in, in sort of like finding solutions. Amazing. I think that will be my superpower. Yeah. I I keep meaning to swap these questions around yeah. because I think we should ask this one before the other one. But never mind. Hey ho, that's the way it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your kryptonite? Ooh, food. <laughs> <laughs> food is my kryptonite. Good taste in food. <gasps> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, do, do you know? Uh, when you ask that question, yeah, I'm sitting exactly. here thinking, cake. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Food. Okay. Food, good taste and food, that's it, I'm done. Yeah. Okay, I, th- I think food, cake, wine, you got anything along those lines? Uh, wine and cheese. I, like I was cheese. just going to say cheese. Because <laughs> it just went okay. with it. Right, let's, that's just living and yes. that's just life. <laughs> right, yeah. okay. okay. We have to get some, something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, let's put all of those to one side. Uh-huh. Now watch your kryptonite. Um... I think fear of the unknown. Mm. Oh, yeah. okay. I usually song fearless. Mm. Um, okay. But sometimes the fear of the unknown, it sort of challenges me. Yeah. But I have to dig deep, really okay. deep and be like, you know what? Nah, you're not going to conquer me. You're not going to do it. Good for you. Mm. You've got to go above that ceiling. Yeah, I have to go that ceiling. Do you find, is there ever a point where those sometimes a a fear of the unknown or Mm -hmm. a fear actually Mm -hmm. serves a purpose? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And stops us being overtaken by our enthusiasm and, oh, I've I've lost the word. But you know when sometimes you think, yeah, this is a fantastic idea. I'm going to do that and off I go. And Uh and Uh and you're racing down the road. And you haven't haven't actually gone, hang on a minute. (laughs) What about that? That, And what about this? And what about that? And there's some other... It doesn't mean you won't do it, but there may be some other things that you need to take into into account. So is is it really a kryptonite? Or is is it something that's going, just hang on a minute and let's think around this topic? Well, t- yes and no, because usually I think around the topic anyway because I'm quite good at that. Yeah. However, sometimes I think I flip it, on its, flip it on its head and I said, you know what, because I find at that stage that fear is crippling, I use that but to propel me. Mm. So at the time it will seem to be my kryptonite because it'll have me like, oh my, you know what I mean? Oh no. No way, no way. There's, there's no way. Like, you know, doing the CIC and even though I'm having my own health issues, um, what I have at, at the moment is consuming. And now I find myself pushed into this new realm okay. um, and it's challenging. And I'm like, shall I? Can I really? Can you? Can you? And I'm like, do you know what? No, you're not going to stop me. Yeah. Watch me go. Mm. Because I'm not going to go with regrets. I'm not going to go thinking I should have, would have, could have. What, no. what, what if? What, what if? if? No, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to be one of them people that add that well to the cemetery. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> All right, then. So what is your misunderstandings around your topic then? Part, whoa. Oh, yeah. What is my misunderstanding around my topic? Yeah. Wow. Break that down for me. <laughs> Um, what 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 do people assume? Yeah, what do they so assume? So what, what do people assume about what you do that is very often wrong? So a lot of people assume that I only cater for one demographic. Okay. Um, and I am all inclusive, as in all inclusive. Amazing. Um, so a lot of people assume that. Um, a lot of people f- also think that um, it is a family-run business. And even though I have family... In the business, yeah, it is mine. Okay, so then she must have a yes. Top, she must have I, a top tip for yes. business success. Then, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes. So, what will your top tip for being in business be then? Um, don't take yourself too seriously. Mm. Um, and I think what I what I didn't learn then um, 
um, if I have to do it all over again, what I would do is do a lot of accruing. I would accrue for sick days. I would accrue for holidays. Okay. I would be really, really strategic in doing that mm. because I went in, I just dived in as, as you heard. Yeah. You know, mm. I went in and I was like, yep, you can do this. Come on, crack on. But I didn't give allowances for stuff like that. So I find myself mm. working seven days Twenty four seven, nonstop. Yeah. You haven't yeah. you haven't built in your downtime. No, exactly. Before we we have got some more stuff, but mm-hmm. before we go too much further, I want to just um, ask you: How can people get hold of you? How can they contact you if they so want to? So I am on Instagram. I am on Facebook. We are um, Chatham High Street. So it's two nine nine Chatham High Street, ME four four BN. Um, we also have a LinkedIn profile. And it's Cleopatra's Legacy CIC. Um, and yeah, we have the phone number, which is 01634 843 608. Yeah, and they can email as well Cleopatra's Legacy UK at gmail.com. Thank you. Brilliant. We haven't finished. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's more. So, on, um, I should just say, when, before guests come on, we don't have any set questions mm-hmm. because that would just be really boring and make life quite simple, wouldn't it? Um, so, we wouldn't <laughs> want to do that. Um, but we do ask guests um, to, to send us in some information about themselves. And one of the things we ask are what are one to three books that have most influenced you? Yeah, or you would give as a gift, uh, as a gift, mm-hmm. and you came you came up with a book that I have never seen before turn mm-hmm. up, and it was Barbara Taylor Bradford, A Woman of Substance. <gasps> now I've never read the book, but she's, ama- she's amazing. But, I've, mm-hmm. but I have heard of it. Yeah. Um, why Why did you recommend that? What's um, it brought for you? So for me, it influenced. Um, so from immigrating from. A small little country girl mm-hmm. coming into a big city and sort of it raised awareness of of resilience and that strength and commitment. Um, it empowered me to sort of mm. push forward, Makes you know. Um, and at one point, her struggles are related. It resonated with me. Her struggles in in, in the book, and um, I was like, yeah. And it was so motivating. And I'm like. You know what? I can do that too because she was from a very sort of um, what you call it, a poor a poor background, Got you. Mm-hmm. and she worked really really hard. Yeah. she pushed forward and she she dedicated. She was dedicated, and I'm like I can see some of me in her. Yeah, and I'm like yeah. Even though the scenarios might be different and the timing might be different, mm-hmm. she she didn't she didn't suffer fools and she pushed forward. She pressed mm. forward, and I love that. Do you know, yeah. because I'm not, as, as you can tell, I'm not a quitter, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I, I, it, it was just awesome. Now, I've, I haven't haven't read it recently. I read it some years ago, but it was, it Im, it imprinted. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. It's just in my core. Yeah. Do you know what? Barbara would be really honoured that you said that. Yeah. <laughs> Good. She would. Yeah. So she was, yeah. I'll get her to listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other book that you recommended was, and I can't read this lady. Ian, I- oh, Ian, Laz- Ian, 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 thank you. Yeah. Um, the Value in the Valley, a black yeah. woman's guide through life's dilemmas. Yes. Also, another book that I have I haven't heard of. What did that bring for you? Um, somebody that actually could relate to us in in as a culture. Okay. Some of the trials and tribulations that we go through as 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 people, um, as women of a specific demographic, mm-hmm. um, and. To hear her put her side across, again, it resonated. And I'm like, yeah, but she found strength in that. Mm -hmm. She found strength in all the different oppression and opposition and everything else. And even though as we as people of color tend to use that as our sort of, um, you know, barrier. Sometimes mm. we use that I can't as do that. Own. I can't yeah. do that because, yeah, because, yeah. because I've, somebody I've heard, because yeah, I've heard know. I've heard some women say, yes. oh, I, I I didn't get that job because I'm a woman. I can't yes. start that business yes. up because I'm a woman." And like, all, yeah. yeah, and I was I was like, "No, you know what? Again, she conquered everything else and she was like, yeah. "You know what? We will fight through this." And she showed grit and determination. Amazing. She studied, she went to school, you know, while she was raising her children and everything else that, that we could resonate with most of us, you know. Um and again, she was from a very sort of a um, not necessarily a poor background, but yeah, it was. Do you know what? Yeah, it was a poor background, and she, her story was much like mine. You mm. know, 
she immigrated and was like, yeah, push forward. Yeah. You can do this. So we are coming to the end of the programme and I have one more question for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know, I might have a couple more. Let's see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know now that you wish you'd have known when you started out? Wow. <laughs> the level of commitment it would have taken. Um, but you know what, in all honesty, I think we might disagree or we might agree, but I think everything that I've been through brought me to who I am now. Yes. And mm. I am literally in love with who I am. Mm. I love me. Good. Because every time I look at myself and I see, you know, all these the, the marks on my face and the age and everything else, I know I have worked hard. I've committed and I've given 100%. If I should close my eyes today, I have given 100% of me to everything that I've done. And for that, I love me. That's I don't do one. half. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. So, Desiree Nurse, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for being a VIP exhibitor as well as the Women in Business Big Show. So, founder of Cleopatra's Beauty Spot and Cleopatra's Legacy and Community Interest Company is going to be changing lives, I know, for for years to come. And I really do believe that it is going to be a legacy. Mm -hmm. You've got two wonderful children who are working with you in the business. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what legacy is all about? That is it. Yeah, that is it. Absolutely. And thank you so very much for having me. I really enjoy this. Oh, Thoroughly enjoy this. It's amazing. it's it's, Thank it's amazing. You. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Let's say goodbye to Mikkel. Thank you. And Jeanette, thank you. thank you very much. We are going to be meeting in a later show. So thank you very much, everybody. We will see you all very, very soon. Take care. It wasn't it, was it Hill Street Blues that said take care out there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> be be careful out there. Be careful. <laughs> we will see you all soon. <laughs> Tune in next week to the Women in Business radio show for more stories, ideas and inspiration to help you grow your business.